Hey guys, my name is Andrew Perlot with Renaissance Humans and today we're diving into lectins. They are a element in all plants, all plants you eat anyway, that uh, has the potential to really hurt you. So years ago when I adopted a diet based around raw fruits and vegetables, the autoimmune disease colitis that had been destroying my life for many years just disappeared. Bam, it's gone. Why? Why would uncooked food bring about a remission, complete disappearance of an autoimmune condition and every attempt to reintegrate those foods since has resulted in a return to some degree of those symptoms. Today, we're gonna to be talking about why lectins are the likely reason. Talk to raw food advocates about why raw food diets sometimes bring about these miraculous remissions of conditions like colitis that I have or all these autoimmune conditions. Why does it happen? They'll often be like, oh, well, you know, you're not heating the food. It's, uh, you know, you don't have denatured proteins anymore. The fat has not uh, been made carcinogenic by the heat. Uh, they'll throw around. Uh, sometimes it's enzymatic, it's, uh, enzymatic things that are destroyed by the heat. Uh, personally, I don't believe that any of those things are behind why my raw food diet has allowed me to, to escape colitis. And I think this for very simple reasons, and that is that the things that trigger my my colitis to the symptoms to come back are not all raw. In fact, the divide is, is very clearly uh, one of something else, and that is which foods have the most lectins. So fruit, which is one of the most low lectin foods that you can find. And we're gonna be talking about more about lectins in a second. Uh, the leafy green vegetables I eat, mostly low lectin leafy green vegetables. But you hand me a tomato, a raw tomato, I eat that tomato, I will be in serious trouble. And you know, uh, say a cooked sweet potato does a lot less damage to me than uh, a raw pepper, a raw tamarillo. So lectins are the difference here. Sweet potatoes, very low in lectins. And uh, you know, members of the nightshade family, those peppers, those tomatoes, those uh, potatoes, all really high in lectins. So uh, let's talk a little bit about what these lectins are and what, the, what scientific research has been done to figure out exactly how they affect our body, in particular, uh, autoimmune conditions, inflammatory conditions, and diseases of the intestines and bowels. The thing about lectins is that they're pretty much everywhere in plant foods. But even if they're almost universally present, the quantity in any given food varies dramatically. The highest concentrations of lectins are found in products like beans and many types of grains like wheat and most nightshade vegetables like potatoes and peppers and tomatoes. Nuts and seeds are also a really high source of lectins, but where you won't find them is in very ripe fruit like peaches. They're present, but just in very low quantities by the time the fruit is very ripe and soft. Modern medical research increasingly recognizes lectins as toxic and inflammatory to the human body when it's present in enough quantity. This shouldn't surprise you because lectins are essentially a defense mechanism deployed by plants to dissuade things from eating them. Lectins can actually just bind to most types of cells and cause quite a bit of damage. They've been noted to actually damage entire organ systems. But how do the lectins actually get into your body to damage those organ systems? Shouldn't they just be trapped in your gut? Unfortunately, no. They apparently have the ability to eat away at the mucus, uh, which protects your gut, your intestines, and open up your intestines to a lot of damage. Not everyone is affected the same way, however. When humans were given nasal drops full of lectins, the reactions were varied between a little bit of extra mucus and really severe reactions that you might 
expect to see with a severe cold or the flu or something like that. We evolved to be able to deal with lectins, but genetically some of us perhaps are not as well equipped as others and suffer more acutely. Researchers have recently found that not only can it strip away that mucus layer, but once, once the lining of your intestine is damaged, it can actually stop your body from repairing those gaps in the intestinal wall. This leads to food penetrating the gut wall and getting into your body, and uh, this is the so-called leaky gut syndrome. Give a rat a whole bunch of lectins and you see not only swelling of the gut wall, but also of the pancreas as well as an atrophy of the thymus, which plays a critical role in our immune system. This is why researchers are increasingly noting that people with Crohn's disease and other inflammatory bowel conditions often have higher degrees of intestinal permeability than normal people. Our gut walls are compromised, food is getting through, and an immune reaction is the result. The last few years has just seen a whole lot of studies coming out showing that in a minority of the population suffering from weird diseases, that lectins may be playing some role, in, including things like Parkinson's disease and a number of other mental diseases. A lot of these studies were not particularly well done, and we'll find out in time when they're published through a better peer review process and more studies have fact-checked them. A lot of them aren't true, but at least in terms of uh, the gut permeability, the gut damage, and some of the connections to the autoimmune diseases and uh, gut disorders, there seems to be a pretty clear connection there. So if you are suffering with a digestive issue, my book, The Raw Food Digestive Tuna, basically puts you on a very low lectin diet while also selecting out a lot of the other elements that can cause problems for people that are unrelated to lectins. Uh, so you might want to check that out. And more broadly, my book, Raw Food, Weight Loss and Vitality, kind of gives you the bigger picture view here. Uh, and I think that this is why so many people feel better when they eat a raw food diet. And people who are not necessarily genetically susceptible to those lectins may not notice as large of a difference. Uh, but this has really opened up, this, this idea that I've been really throwing around for years has really opened up uh, some exploration for me. It's something I've been playing around with for a while now, uh, almost uh, two years I've been doing various experiments. I've really ramped things up in the last uh, nine months or so. And so uh, this video and, and the accompanying article are going to serve as kind of the launching point for uh, the background, to talk about the background material so that I can really uh, get into some interesting experiments that, I'm go that I've been that doing. So uh, over the next few, uh, months uh, into next year probably you're gonna see some interesting uh, personal experiments that I've been doing uh, regarding lectins and modifying those lectin content because think about it this way if if it's really lectins that are the underlying cause of my condition then if I take a high lectin food and use scientific validated means of reducing the lectin content I should have a drop in symptoms so uh, stick with me and uh, we'll see if that theory plays out.